Dragon's Plague is a new mechanic added to Dragon's Dogma 2 that affects pawns, and the terminal stage of this disease was unknown to the player base until very recently, when players now are reporting the devastating results of letting Dragon's Plague go untreated for too long. Rather than being weakened, pawns with the disease are said to display remarkable performance and to become conspicuously bold in their speech and behavior. According to folklore, when symptoms of Dragon's Plague reach terminal stage, it will result in devastating calamity, but the veracity of those claims is unclear. This is what little information we are giving initially, but with the players exploring more secrets every day, we know now that unlike other debilitations, Dragon's Plague is not recorded in the pawn status. From information in-game, we know that pawns remain entirely unaware of their condition, but there will sometimes be subtle differences in their behavior. But players have reported vastly different experiences with how the incubation period is played out for them. Some did not even see any glowing red eyes, hear any pawn dialogue that was different, or visual discomfort before it was too late. When a pawn in your party, either your own one or one you have rented from the rift contracts this disease, it will always reach terminal stage when you are resting and time passes. This includes resting in inns and letting time pass on benches. But what's still unknown among the community is how long it takes before one of your pawns are affected until a rest at the inn will trigger the cutscene that reveals how your affected pawn will transform into a shadowy dragon of themselves and lay waste to entire towns full of people. For that reason, it is very understandable that players now are afraid of their saves, which we only have one of, will be ruined and that we'll lose important NPCs and vendors that lock you out of important quests and items. Luckily, this is not the case, and although there is a lot of misinformation going around about how people's saves are ruined, there are steps we can take to prevent, cure and revive towns that have been struck by this calamity. First, let's cover how your pawns can contract Dragon's Plague so that we know when to especially be observant and effectively stop the spread of the disease at an early stage. The different kinds of dragon kin like drakes, dragons and infected dragons we see here can all infect your pawns simply by fighting them. In the first game, dragons could grab your pawns and essentially turn them against you with the power of their own will. This mechanic returns in the sequel but it's unclear if this grab attack increases the likelihood of contracting Dragon's Plague. Although that would make sense, so I would suggest making doubly sure to take precautions if one of your pawns get caught in this attack during a fight. Another way of contracting Dragon's Plague is by renting a pawn that is already infected. Since these are the only two ways we know so far, a simple yet effective tactic is to always cleanse your pawn immediately after they enter your world. The easiest way is to throw them into the brine and then resummon them from a rift stone. This is something we should also do after fighting a dragon, and as long as you get into the habit of taking these precautions mentioned here, you should be able to play the game without worrying about Dragon's Plague and constantly checking your pawns for symptoms. But let's say you got unlucky and disaster already have struck and you find your town or village you were resting in got wiped out by the dragon attack. You can of course resurrect the dead from the local morgue, but that would be extremely expensive and most people don't want to use their limited gold to resurrect the whole town. Instead, we can rest at an inn and let time pass naturally, and in the process this will eventually heal back the town and dead NPCs, vendors and key characters will mostly return. I say mostly because players have reported that even after resting for a week, some NPCs are not returning. This could mean that some of the town inhabitants take longer to revive by themselves and that we should wait even longer to get them back eventually. Now I want to try and understand how Dragon's Plague makes sense from a lore perspective, but also as a gameplay mechanic. In the first game, it was only former Arisen that would turn into dragons, although the lore of Bitter Black Isle is more diffuse regarding this and some people have theorized that Daemon and the spectral dragon we see during the fight is a combination of both Asha and Greta in some form, as well as there being corrupt pawns that wander the labyrinth. 
but it might be that we in the sequel get a deeper understanding of the lore regarding dragons and how they are made. We also have extensive lore from the online version of the game that most likely will be included and presented for us in the sequel. I have only scratched the surface when it comes to the lore and world building in Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm very interested in finding out more and understand how the stories in the first game, Bit of Black Isle and Dragon's Dogma Online is connected. If you are interested in lore and the deeper meaning of the game, we have a Discord and a team there who are very knowledgeable about the game, and we are just starting to lorecraft Dragon's Dogma 2. Lastly, I want to briefly touch upon Dragon's Plague as a game mechanic, and how I think Itsuno wanted this to teach the players about the game. I think what they want to convey here is an even deeper connection between pawns and the worlds of players. Instead of there being singular beings in the rift, it's more of a web that connects the worlds of all players. Some say this mechanic will reduce pawn activity in general, and that people will just shy away from ever renting a pawn again. That might be partly true, but since you can get infected by your main pawn as well, and how important a full team of pawns are to take down most of the difficult bosses, renting additional pawns from the rift feels like a necessity at times. Ultimately, the Dragon's Plague mechanic makes us in a way care more for the pawns in our party, and maybe that is what they want for us to take from this. Either way, it's certainly an interesting mechanic, and I hope that with this knowledge, players are armed with ways to prevent, cure, and heal your towns that are struck by this devastating calamity.